Hello, everyone. I'm just allowing people to enter the chat. Um, you can just drop in the chat, like, you know, where you're watching from, tuning in. That works too, as people slowly enter. And as people enter, I'm going to play this video um, that Flo was featured in an interview series from, uh, I think, Culture Hub. And so I'll do that as people enter. And you can drop where you're watching from right now. My name is Flo Ngala. I'm a photographer and a creative from Harlem, New York. The first camera I owned was a Minolta, like X something, I forgot the, the model, but it was like a Minolta film camera, a 35 millimeter analog film. Eighth grade was the first time I ever picked up a camera and then going into ninth grade, I did it. Um, I did photography like throughout high school, but it was a um, film. It wasn't difficult for me to navigate through photography back then because the areas that I was capturing and interested in capturing were my home, like I'm from Harlem, New York, that was my neighborhood. I was comfortable in this space and I also was like young and a bit like fearless, so I wasn't afraid of the environment. I wasn't necessarily was intimidated. For me at least, it's about like capturing moments. That's why I like shooting BTS. I think I like kind of being able to just move and not have to worry about like people knowing what's happening, just kind of seeing things and getting them in the moment. Literally. I would say that my sense of fearlessness definitely came from my parents. I'm West African, my parents immigrated here in the 90s, and they just kind of like came and went at it. My environment being New York City and then like being a figure skater, it's like you don't really see many like black girls figure skating, you know? So I think that felt like an act of defiance in and of itself. And so from a young age, I just didn't really give a fuck. <laughs> I never really like entertained the idea of not, um, getting where I wanted to be, you know? I think so much so that it was just like, you know, as I got older and realized like what manifestation was and like what that actually like meant, I was like, oh shit, that's, that's what this is. Anytime I'm, I'm hit up or emailed or DM'd by whoever, it's, it's really humbling and exciting. I was like, you know, how'd you find my work? I always like to ask people and I encourage young artists to always also ask like how people come into contact with their work just so you can kind of almost like a little bit of market research and know like how word is spreading. So um, at the top of this year, I started off um, shooting something for Netflix for the first time, which was really dope. And then I went from that right into like my first Rolling Stone job. I just shot a billboard cover like two weeks ago, which was crazy. And then with the protests that have been happening, it's been kind of interesting, but also sort of bittersweet to see the work that's come from that. But then also like, I don't know, it's a little like, damn, I've never seen this many people at one time. I've never been part of like such big crowds. I've never seen rioting or looting or things being burned um, up close and personal like this. And I think it's super necessary to see and to feel, to understand how upset people are, to understand how serious the photography aside, like I'm there first as a person who's in support of the movement, there first as a black woman before I am a photographer. I think I give myself a lot of shit or maybe feeling like I don't work hard that much or like, I don't know, almost like imposter syndrome, which naturally comes to artists. I turned 25 like a month ago. So you're in spaces and people are like, oh shit, like you get this and you're young and that and that. And so working for Gucci was the first thing that really, I guess, like kind of sort of catapult my career a bit. When he first came out of prison in like 2016, I got to do personal photography for him. And then that turned into doing personal photography for Cardi. And then that led to like a bunch of opportunities with my portfolio. People were just like, oh shit, like, you know, how'd you get these shots? And that just leads to so many conversations. So I'm really thankful for um, the people I've met and the work I've been able to produce. And I always, I always think it's so important to make sure the two are really aligned. I think a lot of people really want to be in the rooms, but you know, you have to really like set the precedent so that people can see your shit and be like, oh, this is this is hot. You know, like no question that. For me, the next step just kind of looks like figuring out how to really hold myself accountable to like those standards of excellence. It should be normal to be like popping and black and young and gifted. And sadly, it's not. So 
accomplishments are great, but ultimately, like, I think legacy looks like more than just, like, who you shot and what you did. It's really, like, how did you help people? You know, like, a black woman literally gave me a chance at shooting with Cardi and Gucci and, like, gave me my first flight to L.A., my first flight to Miami, and so that's why I'm in the position I am now. So it's just about accomplishments, but also, like, the more important word is accountability to yourself and to like, those around you. My advice to young shooters is, again, like, just kind of making sure you come correct, making sure your shit is tight. You're trying to get hired and get paid and get in the rooms for people who have been doing this for five, 10, 15, 20 years. Like they've seen a lot of stuff, you know? So it's like, what are you bringing to the table that is super creative, super innovative? Are you able to provide like the most fire color edits? Are you able to get the most amazing shots in the least amount of time? What is that you're bringing to the table? And like, is it is it good? Everyone's story is really, really different. It's about timing and it's about um, just being ready. So that way when your time comes, you can make sure you come correct. Yeah, and you can just run with it. So definitely just, making sure you are super sound and confident. So like I said, when your opportunity comes and you meet that person, when that thing happens, you can just kind of like, you know, get it popping. All right, Shara. So Flo will be in the chat in just a second. She had to restart her connection. Um, but I hope that is a good enough introduction. If you weren't familiar with Flo, now you are. I want to say thank you again to Lightroom for making this possible. Um, if you haven't already, you can put your location in the chat where we can see where you're tuning in from. Okay, and Flo is here, ready. So Flo, welcome. Hey! <laughs> Hi everyone. Your video. Thanks. Let me know if you can hear me. When I was watching it, when it was running back, it was like skipping. So I thought it was me, but I can hear you just fine. So it could have been just like the YouTube thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> thank you. Doing? I'm well. I'm well. I'm um, I'm going through a little bit of hard drive drama, guys. Back up your stuff for real. I I might have my first scare. So. Everyone pray for me, for real, <laughs> because my 2020 drive, I, I literally just dropped it on the floor, and, you know, Mac is not is not with the kids, so I'm, I'm going to honestly just pray about it and try and get it um, recovered today, so, but I, I, have, I have optimism and definitely lesson learned, definitely always need a backup. Yeah, oh my gosh, and I said, um, I said this before, if you've been to these other chats, feel free to turn on your camera, we won't make this you know, I, I want Flo to see your beautiful faces that we're not just staring at screens. So hey, right. Aisha, Tarisha, thank you um, if you can, because I know some people are working, so I understand if you can. Hey, Ashley. Um, and so, you know, I know we did that intro video, but I want to hear from you, Flo. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself some more. I know you have the West African roots, but the floor is yours. For sure. Thank you guys for um, being here. And yeah, definitely would love to see everyone's beautiful faces if you're comfortable. But I am, um, I'm from New York City, born and raised in Harlem, New York. Um, my parents immigrated here in the 90s from West Africa. Um, my dad um, had a student visa and he came here to pursue a PhD in communications, but he also had a background in design. So I like to kind of say that like art being artistic was sort of already like in my family a little bit and like all my siblings have in some way kind of picked up you know design or writing or photography my little sister's a, is a aspiring director slash videographer um so yeah i've just been really blessed to um you know have that kind of mix of like west african roots and that kind of culture in my household and like an experience living in like this country um growing up in harlem which is the predominantly black community um being really inspired by just the people here and like the authenticity of like the connections that my parents made that my family's made that i made um and in middle school i went on to learn about photography in seventh grade i got to shoot black and white film photos um in sorry not seventh grade in eighth grade and then throughout high school i did um i i did it and fell in love with it i was a huge tumblr user slash addict like i was heavy heavy on the tumblr and like that was a big part of like how i was inspired to honestly just get into being an artist because people would just 
create such beautiful work, like just use their resources. And I started to take self-portraits. I started to take portraits of people in Harlem um, with my camera. Um, and then I went on to major in advertising and minor in design. And I didn't major in photography, but then um, after kind of doing two internships at ad agencies, photography kind of like, you know, like your passion has a really beautiful way of following you, even when you, I feel like, or not running away from it, but just like, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll be like, I mean, let me just get a job and like be cool. But yeah, she was like, no, no sis. <laughs> so I ended up <laughs> getting into photography um, after my internships. And I, I, I say since 2016, like when people ask, like, when did you actually officially kind of get your first job or start doing things professionally? Um, as you guys saw in the video, 26, uh, Gucci was the first um, experience there. And then 2016 was the first time that I feel like I did like a actual like paid thing for like like a, a artist or like someone notable and then you know ever since then it's been really cool I think it's just been like a domino effect now let's go back to the eighth grade though because I don't know about your family I mean in West African family I mean my I'm East African but my family you know doctor lawyer engineer all of that but you mm -hmm. picked up a camera in eighth grade so how did your family like nurture you you know, to foster that creativity, um, you know, to lead you into this path? Yeah, that's a good question. I think a lot of people, um, you know, we all know like there's a, there's a the kind of negative, um, sadly, the negative stereotype and stigma behind like, you know, the arts and like, honestly, even just being first gen at all. Um, I think that in having as an elective, like I went to a pretty good school and I've always been my parents have always made sure that education came first and like I have totally am an advocate for like finishing school going to college you know I'm even thinking about going back and like getting like a master's or something you know honestly during quarantine like I was just thinking about my other skill sets and what I was passionate about and I love like communication I love teaching I love talk I clearly clearly I love talking so like for me um I definitely think that like being like sound here is so important. And I'm so grateful for having been able to have a good education and go to a school where there was enough financial aid and there were enough resources for me to learn about photography. But I think that because when I started off, it was something that was just like a hobby, something cool. Um, it was a nice kind of like intro in for my parents, uh, for my mom actually I'll say. Um, I sadly lost my father when I was in eighth grade, ironically enough. So he actually never got to see like any of, any of the stuff I'm doing now. But I really believe that he's still like, you know, in in me and like his spirit and his energy and his hustle and like all of that is a big part of why I think that I've been able to like kind of see the world the way I do. But yeah, I think it was it was an intro in and it was soft. My mom, you know, we would go to like photo stores and she didn't really know what was going on. But, you know, she she saw that I loved it. She saw that I would ask my siblings to take pictures of them. I used to go to my roof and take photos. I would spend hours like editing. And then eventually, you know, I started getting paid to do it here and there. And she was just pretty supportive. So I just say, like, you know, if you do have a parent or, like, a, 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 a family that maybe maybe isn't as supportive as you'd like them to be about your passion, I think it's about just, like, honestly, you still follow your dream. Like, still, like, not like that discourage you. But I think sometimes, like, you know, parents, family, they just want to protect us. Um, and sometimes they just don't realize, like, like you know just because it's not this and that it doesn't mean it won't be successful so it's just, it's about just keeping the positivity and the optimism and the energy and then just doing the work right like eventually my mom had to see my photos and like you know google like who's gucci main like literally she read his whole autobiography when i started working with him like she's so crazy but she let, read the whole thing you know like she like will always like look at cardi b's instagram stuff like that but i think when she started to see the application of the passion and like how it was manifesting itself in the real world they kind of have no choice but to you know they can't they can't tell you anything after that so yeah <laughs> so she knows what you do now yeah she does she's like my <laughs> I joke, she, my mom is like my social media like analyst. It's so like in my house, it's such a mess. Like, 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 yeah, she just, she's so, I mean, I'm her kid, so she'll always be entitled to me, but she's so funny. She'll get really invested. Like, why would you post that? You know, wouldn't do well on Instagram. <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh my goodness. And so you mentioned internships. Talk to me about that. Like, how do those internships play a role into, you know, landing that Gucci break and then following Cardi break? 
Um, honestly, ironically enough, the Gucci and the Cardi, uh, those kinds of first intros into like my career weren't um, tied to the internships, but I did get an internship with a photography portfolio. So basically what happened was, um, like I said, I majored in advertising, I minored in design, I wanted to be an art director slash creative director, and that's still what I'm passionate about, just like creativity in general. And for me, you know, it was kind of the start of like when Instagram became really like a thing and like, you know, like I said, Tumblr was being used a lot. I personally always just wanted to make sure that I was learning from people and resources that I thought weren't just like, you know, people that like had access to Wi-Fi and like, like, and just like could share stuff on the internet. I kind of still wanted to like, you know, still be a student of people who maybe like went to school and like, and really get that like hands-on application of like, I don't know, education or like learning, if that makes sense. So I say that to say, um, I interned because I wanted to like be around like the older heads who like sat in the meetings and, and spoke about it and, and, and spoke about advertising and creative direction and strategy and marketing at a really high level so that I could come back and apply it for myself to like my more like millennial social media space. And so that that's just why I decided to do internships. And obviously, like, you know, you talk about connections, you talk about the networking, like two of the jobs I've been able to do for Reebok, for example, once Cardi got a deal with them, came through um, the creative director that I used to intern for in San Francisco after I graduated school, just like knowing I love photo, like following my work. Um, and I think that experience is so invaluable that I always, like I always am gonna be kind of an advocate for like, you know, having like the kind of new age, like getting to the bag your own way, using social media and everything. But also I think that you really still do need like to make sure you're grounded in like the other, you know, the other space of like internships and advertising and marketing. For me personally, that's how I've been able to support myself. Like music is cool and creating that work is awesome. But I feel like, you know, the bags that everyone as a, I don't know how many of you guys want to be like freelance photographers forever, but everyone who is interested in like maybe, you know, being able to be sufficient as an artist, I feel like it's important to understand like the commercial space as well. So being able to intern gave me that insight, you know, sitting in meetings, hearing how people spoke about, you know, Reebok accounts or like IHOP or like, um, you know, Chase, like all that stuff, like how people hire photographers, what they look for, you know, how you need to present your website, how things need to be accessible. And that's something I'm still working on working on now still but i will say that that experience of interning really you know it helped me to see it from that perspective and those are the people that are going to go on to hire us that are going to go on to share our portfolios are going to go on to tell their friends about us so it's really important to kind of see both sides of it if you can so yeah i think that's a good transition because tarisha am i saying your name right because you asked a question earlier Mm -hmm. i don't know if you want to unmute yourself and ask it but Sorry, which which question? The one that you were talking about from when you're actually doing this, so you're practicing, you're doing this freelance life, but how do you make sure, like, how do you know that moment that you can actually make a living off of this full time? Like, how can you get into that transition mode from, you know, freelance, maybe a couple gigs to actually being, okay, I'm making a living from my art. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's the question. Um, I mean, it's a great question. I, I always like to say, like, there's not, like, a one-size-fits-all formula for success. Like, I don't know what point you guys are in your careers now or how much further you want to go, how much more you want to do, but I really believe that we um, limit ourselves when we think it's, like, oh, I need to know this and then do this and then send this amount of emails and then things are going to happen. It really is about, like, for me, it's been about timing and, like, preparation. Like, when the opportunity came um, to work with Gucci, I, I had like, some work that was ready. Um, I was like, I've always been really charismatic and outgoing. I feel like my energy and um, my vibe is a big part of why people honestly hire me. It's like, it's, there's so many different factors and we all have different things in our skill sets that make us, you know, I'm sure some of you guys are like super organized. Like I'm not that organized and that's what something I'm working on. Maybe some of you guys are like really good at following up or you're really good at, you know, social media content management of your pages and stuff. So there's so many different aspects. I will say though that um, your question was about like transitioning, right? And like how to make that transition. I feel like um, just, you have to just, I, I think one thing that really helps is just knowing the market. Like, so spaces and like resources, like, you know, ad week or like, um, you know, creative outlets, like knowing the people who are creating that work and like seeing what they're into, knowing who they are. 
um, is, is helpful. And like I said, because I interned, that was sort of my in to that space in that world. Um, I remember in like 2017, I did this like advertising competition. That's actually how I got one of my, my one of my internships. Um, and that was in the back end, right? This is not stuff that I'm necessarily like talking about on social media that much, but I know that like, that's what I have to do to make sure that I feel secure about like, you know, building my network and having those connections. So transitioning, it's about, I think, well, like I said, one, like knowing the market, like knowing who's making what, you know, every year there are so many lists that come out of like top 100 creatives to know, 30 creatives that are doing this, all these directors. And if you are just limiting yourself to like this social media bubble or like what's cute on Instagram or Twitter, you're missing so much. Like there's so, 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 so much. So I would say knowing the market, um, being prepared, and then looking at people who you admire, people who are doing like professional work, you know, people who are getting flown out to work for, you know, Chase or, you know, doing this for this person there. Look at how they're marketing themselves, look at how they're presenting their work. A lot of times I'll go on work, um, go on the pages of work of young people and I'll be like, wow, this person's stuff is dope or they have a good eye, but they need to cut down like half of these photos or they should like position this differently like presentation is a big part of it too sometimes people just need to see your work in that like professional light and professional way for them to even know that you can do it um but like i said it's, it's a mix of different things um and you should just do trial and error you know see what works you know is it about like emailing more is it about like signing people's dms is it about like tweeting things you need to be you know like my sister like she like she has found a way to use Twitter really well. She'll share like her Twitter photos or she'll share like photos on Twitter. And like, I don't know what she figured out, but things will go like viral, like low key. And then all of a sudden she'll get like all these DMs and stuff. So it, it works differently for people, but all these conversations lead to others. And as long as you're just being aware that there's not like one perfect way or one right way, just the way that works for you, just that energy alone can continue to manifest like bigger and better opportunities for you. And I don't know if I answered your question, sorry. I like, I see so much coming off whenever you need to. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Did you have a follow-up or? <laughs> no, um, that's just like really amazing. Like, and it's, it actually it was nice to like be reminded that there isn't just like one way. And I know like other people like um, get to where they are from different ways. Um, so that just really helped me to like understand that maybe I should go about it like in a different way or really look at my portfolio to see like what new work I can do to like show that I'm capable of doing other things. Yeah, yeah. And you, and you sound like you're already re ready and willing to do the work. Also, if anyone like wants my insight, I don't know if that helps, but like, Polly, you're welcome to like share or you're welcome to just reach out to me if you want like, uh, I don't know, like a website weigh in I'm not like a well I am a professional I guess but like if you want if you want like another opinion I'm happy to like be like hey like you know try doing this here or maybe move this project up I, I like to I like to do that so I'm yeah I'm available <laughs> yeah I think that's a perfect transition then because I asked her to walk us through her work and sequencing and just just her process with all of the work that she like I didn't even begin to compile it I mean do you just start with Cardi or what so I'm gonna share my screen um and show you all her latest portfolio um and I dropped in the chat her sister is Wendy she's an incredible photographer oh thank you for doing that I dropped it in the chat so you can see that was an example of her just using you know Twitter to she knows the algorithm she knows how it works and get her work seen so um okay so everyone see it? Like where you dropped it hold on yeah i dropped it in the chat <laughs> which which thing which tweet is this i don't know like it's... the black woman yes that's exactly what i was talking about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no literally literally and then she um she graduated this year um and she posted like she like harassed me about taking her graduation photos Oh my and god! I have to show that those were yeah. beautiful. Those also went viral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh my gosh, Wendy! They're talking about my oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, let me. <laughs> <laughs> but that no, that's that's exactly what I was talking about, guys. So like my sister, um, so she has like this like we use like the same equipment basically, but she has like this completely other way of seeing the world, which is really dope. So she can create these kinds of, in this tweet, like what you're saying, like these really cool moments with her editing. Um, she's more into directing and videography, but her, her editing is really, really dope. 
Um, <laughs> and then like with her, with her, um, her graduation post as well. Like, I took the pictures, but the edit and the finish of it was all her vision. But like Twitter works for her, you know, like that's a, so, so sometimes it just takes knowing, like she knows the system. She's on black Twitter, she's in there and she understood how to like market and position her work in the way that she saw um, beautiful black woman. And yeah, I love, I love that you shared that. Thank you so much for sharing that. No problem. Um, so here is your latest portfolio. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. Oh, Holly, hi. <laughs> is she there? Uh, hi. Hello. Hi, you for reaching out to me. Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. I love hey. it. <laughs> we were just talking about your work. No, seriously, thanks for featuring me. I don't need to hijack the Zoom. But, um, <laughs> Not hijacking the Zoom. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, appreciate you. Thanks for speaking with I was, me. I was just talking about like marketing work and stuff. So oh, I see. Me. I yeah. see. Yeah, very important. <laughs> I, want, I went to high school with her. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> I love okay. it. Um, you were screen sharing. I think I lost. I think I lost. Are you still screen sharing? I can't. Yes. Can you see it? I'm not sure. Um, your Google Drive. Yeah, I think because I went to Twitter. It, um, okay, I see it. Yeah, okay, so, um, so sorry, you wanted me to just kind of walk through it, the work? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so, um, oh, this is so triggering for me because these are the images that are on my hard drive. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get this back. But um, yeah, so this has been a, a pretty cool year. I feel really blessed. Um, I, the, it started off, like, this started off pretty dope. The pandemic has, you know, been a bit difficult to navigate, but I think that um, something that's been a blessing is I started working with the agent this year, um, and so she reached out to me, and I was sort of like, I knew I needed representation. I know, I know, there's all I'm a Gemini, so I'm really all over the place um, quite often, sadly, but like, I knew that I wanted that kind of support and that kind of, um, that kind of help, and so it's been really cool to have someone um, see my work kind of objectively, um, and she and I put together this, uh, this this uh book sort of so it starts off with my bio um uh, which i kind of just share with you guys and then yeah this is an image i got to take of stacy abrams for rolling stone um i i was followed by one of the editors um at at the at the magazine um and uh went in for a meeting and it was really cool because um actually right after um i left my, my agent and i left the the young man reached out and he had this opportunity. So that was really cool. People were like saying hi to her. Um, and if you guys are not familiar, she's a politician um, from, or rep who represents like the state of Georgia. Really funny, like super cool. Um, being able to connect with someone who like, you know, is seen in a more serious light uh, in a more casual way was awesome. And then also I think something that's great about this is like, as I've begun to shoot more and be more comfortable with shooting, Weighing in creatively has been something that's been fun for me. So like I had someone who I knew who like I've worked with before, who's a stylist come on and Stacy was comfortable with working with her. And then she like liked her work and was like, oh, you know, I would love to work with you again. So moments like that happening um, are really important to me too. But yeah, this was in downtown um, Atlanta. Um, the next slide um, was a cover I shot this year for Billboard, which is really, really awesome. So um I will say it, it it was bittersweet to work uh, during like the protests. Like, I started to attend them as an attendee and then I started to get hit up about shooting things and submitting, which like ethically I had to just like really make sure I had peace with first because, you know, you know, while I, I you know, I want to continue to make a living and, and, and create more work, just the fact that some opportunities were coming in light of like just, you know, the BS that was happening in the world. Um, it just it just kind of was an internal struggle for me a little bit this was one of the awesome opportunities that um i got over the summer though and these two young women um are music executives i got to capture them in brooklyn and yeah it, i i love these photos you can scroll down a little bit more um they're basically just like some single portraits and some double portraits that yellow one the green one they didn't they didn't run that one but um uh, my agent wanted to use it in my portfolio and I, and I really love that photo so yeah she's really cool guys she also used to be the project manager for Burna Boy um, and now she has a new job she's moving to LA but her name is uh, Brianna Ag Agamem I think that's how you pronounce her last name so 
definitely like someone you should follow if you um are are a fan of like just black girl magic she has this thing called the brownies as well which is like a book club slash run club slash like like they throw events in the city um but yeah the brownies is their instagram and then you could probably find her through there she's she's really awesome she's like a big sis of mine um this is some work that I had the privilege of doing for the times. This story was so, so special. Um, it was highlighting just like the effed upness, honestly, of like black maternal health, like and 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 black um and and black female like healthcare um in the city. So I don't know if you guys remember, um, a couple months ago on Twitter, there was a young woman who literally tweeted about uh like how she wasn't getting um, the right kind of like healthcare or something at, or she wasn't um, getting the right treatment at like a hospital. I think it was like, actually, I won't even say what hospital because I'm not sure, but basically it ended up going viral because she passed away. Um, there were no complications leading up to her pregnancy. And on the top right, you'll see her child's father and the child that was, um, that was able to still survive, thank God. But like, it was really like tough to work on this story because, um, you know, I, I couldn't just, I couldn't just show up to these, to these homes and to these spaces and just capture them without like, you know, talking to them and communicating with them. I think as an artist, as, an, as photographers, we have to all, often think about ethically, you know, what we're doing and what our role is um, so that we're not just like getting our shots and like going about our business. So all these people, um, uh, the bottom right, uh, she's a doula, top right, um, as I said, as a young man and his child, um, the mother passed away while giving birth. And on the left um, is a young woman who was pregnant with twins and then she lost one of her sons. Um, uh, when she was going to when she was in labor like and, and it was just like you know just very avoidable like situation so this was something that you know again while it was powerful and, and, and awesome to be able to capture these people and hear their stories you know sometimes you have to just really you know check in with yourself about you know the ethics of it and you know I literally was crying like working on these like for, for sure um but yeah, I love these portraits tonight and I really want to send them or I plan to send um, prints of them to, to everyone as well so they could have them in their homes. Um, the next slide is more New York Times work. Um, we can just kind of keep scrolling, honestly. This is a performance artist uh, named Ayana. This was in like Times Square during the pandemic. So it was super, super empty. Um, this is a image I got to work on with Netflix or images I got to work on with Netflix. Um, these women were behind the Madam CJ Walker documentary. Um, on the far left is actually Madam CJ Walker's great, great granddaughter, Alilia Bundles. And she's also her historian, like, like who like uh, catalogs and documents her life. Um, this was cool. I got to weigh in a bit more on the creative direction of it. Um, so here you see the directors and the, some of the producers and the writers. Um, and this was also shot at the top of this year in LA in, in January. Um, I guess we can, there's another one on the stairs, which I want to show is the third one, I think, if you keep scrolling. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> and did you have a team or did you like, when you have a group assignment, um, you know, it's like a cast like this, are you able to you mentioned you had a little bit more creative control, um, but is that usually the case or, you know, how do you go into preparation mode for something like this? Yeah, that's a great question. So this was actually my first time, I think, like being on a set where like, I felt like there were literally like 30 people that I was like, that were, that were like looking to me to like, you know, get the shot and stuff. So it's pretty intense. Like the client was there, like three or four of the clients were there actually from the Netflix team. Um, it was styled by Ade Samuel, who is a, a celebrity stylist, very popular. So she like bodied this, like the jewel tones and the cohesiveness. And she had her like assistants there. Um, and there was a set designer um, and he had two assistants. There were PAs and everything. So um, from my end, at least, I like kind of pitched the creative direction. And again, like I mentioned, going into creative direction, or art direction was something I wanted to do um, in school. So I love that with photography these days, I can kind of merge the two. But yeah, I like looked at old photos of black women. I looked at photos of like, you know, 
girls in like sororities in like the 60s or or the or in the 80s and like tried to see you know historically where were ways that black women in groups would represent themselves and how they would like position themselves and that was sort of a lot of what was on my mood board um and then netflix was pretty adamant on their vision as well the woman who um was on the count for this marissa calhoun also a really awesome awesome black woman who you guys should um follow and, and support she worked on rhythm and flow um which was the show that cardi was on and that's how she found my work and she was behind um well, the kind of lead creative on the netflix side behind this as well and she wanted it to kind of be in this like hair salon situation um so that's the first photo with the rug and like the mirrors in the back that was the vibe for that as well but yeah there was a team and it was it was kind of collaborative and a um it was, it was definitely like i was a little scared um because i felt it was my first time really stepping into that like role of like kind of running a set but i was really happy with how the photos came out and um just being able to connect with all of them was so cool they're so i mean across all of them like when i tell you like own network ava duvernay like um so many shows and things that you guys have probably watched you know these are some of the women behind them they're they're awesome like Dune, uh, Selma, like just just a crazy, crazy um, list of work. So yeah. Someone asked <clears throat> if there was a lighting assistant, or even with your billboard cover, did you use natural lighting? Um, yeah. Good question. So you oh, did. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. So you used natural lighting for the billboard cover, and then. So bill billboard was natural lighting. Um, my sister, who assists me um, for some work, uh she had like a reflector situation and we use a diffuser a little bit more, but um, the cover was a reflector. We shot on a block that had like a lot of trees. So it was like a little shady at some points, which was a little tricky, um, but the reflector really helped to kind of illuminate them a bit better. This was um, lit though. This was like a, a, a lighting person that we sourced in LA um, uh, and she came with her assistant. So we had like these huge, like huge lights and like bounces here. And then I did like the retouching and stuff for it. Cause I like to, I like to do my own retouching where I can on photos. So I kind of just brightened it and cleaned it up where I thought it made sense. Um, but yeah, there was, there was lighting and lighting assistant and there was a tech on set as well. So we were able to see in real time, like with the, the detect screen that was set up, like how things were coming out and everything. Amazing. And then this was the protest that you were talking about earlier on. Yeah, so I guess you can just scroll through these. Um, yeah, I mean, they were taken in, you know, that's the Brooklyn Bridge. You have some in City Hall and in Harlem. Um, sorry. Oops. Do I disturb on? Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was powerful to be able to do this kind of work. I think at my core, I'll always be um, a street photographer and photojournalist. I have become a bit more timid to approaching strangers and capturing people these days. Um, but this is how I kind of started out, even you know, transitioning right into these photos of these young women. Um, this is a project I got to do for the New York Times. It's like my favorite project I've ever done. Um, but just being able to capture people in New York City in life is something I think is so powerful. Being a fly on the wall is something that I saw um, was especially um, important when it came to um, capturing the BLM protests, the um, young woman of figure skating in Harlem for the Times, and then even right down to here, um, Carnival. So um, the protest that was 2020, the New York Times story was end of 2018. Um, and then this, the Carpenter's Carnival photos were taken in Miami, were also end of 2018. You can keep scrolling. I love these photos. I uh, I can't wait for the world to open back up. Oh I love it. Thanks. You know, but how do you like go from like, you know, on a personal level, like, you know, mental health, how do you even go from one hard assignment to then a fun assignment to another hard one? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I mean, I'm sure it takes, a, I mean, for example, even just the maternal health one, that alone, you know, takes a lot out of a person, you know, to cover something like that. That's so personal. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I probably could do better. You know, my, my mental health 
is it, it, it's in and out. And I think during the pandemic, I was really happy to have to be still, you know, because I'm I'm so I'm 25 and I'm you know I'm young, I'm hungry, and like you know one day I'll wake up and it'll be like a crazy email opportunity or like crazy text from someone that's like awesome and I'll just feel I have to go 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 and get it and then I'll kind of come back and there was a phase especially in 2018 um when I like would was traveling a lot more with um or for Cardi and like doing more Gucci stuff where I would just come home and I would just be like a bum for like two weeks and just not do anything so I think it's about um well first of all knowing yourself you know um I do feel like I have really like empath-ish tendencies and that's why I love photography. I love how it can make me feel. I love how it can make people feel. Um, but you do have to separate the two sometimes or you can get, uh, it can get very overwhelming. Um, I think ultimately what I love and what I think my job is, is to tell stories and to see the world through my lens. You know, even with this work, this is some New York, I mean, not New York Times, this is some Nike work you're scrolling through here. Mm -hmm. um but even with that it's like to tell stories and to and to showcase them properly and with the integrity and like the respect they deserve that is what I'm passionate about and the other emotions that come with it can you know help me be a better photographer um but I don't want them to make me you know feel worse like mentally so it's just checking in um and checking in it, it, it's it's like you know thinking about how you feel you know being honest with yourself like you know am I Am I emotionally able to do this? I think as my career continues to go, I want to personally travel more and do more of these like stories where I get to find these subcultures and photograph communities of people who like, you know, maybe I don't know. So I'm going to have to continue to have these conversations conversations with myself and checking on myself. Um, but yeah, like, you know, no one's perfect. Um, I, I would say just not to beat yourself up about anything. Um, I love this photo too. One of my favorites. Of Cardi, yeah, yeah. The previous year, when she was pregnant. If someone wants to work with an artist, what would you recommend that they do now or have in their portfolio? Mm. You know, to even for that way, if opportunity arises, like you said, be stay ready. But how can they even do so? You know, what would you recommend? Um, I think being versatile is really important. I think one of the big reasons why I've been able to work with Cardi for like so long is like because I had like you know I had some event photography I had some um portrait photography I had some like more um street style photography and the person who you know connected me or like trusted me to start working with her like just knew I had the range to capture it all I think artists you know, their lives are crazy and it's fast and it's frequent. And, um, you know, it depends again on like the kind of photographer you wanna be. So, you know, if you wanna be someone who's more studio lighting, set stills, you know, being able to, again, like have that in your portfolio. Like for example, um, one of my like uh, friends, Jora Francis, um, who shot Cardi's Invasion of Privacy cover. She shot like her Fashion Nova collection. She shot like uh, the Be Careful video. When she was kind of discovered by someone on Cardi's team, she had that like range. She had those really beautiful shots and they were of models or like other, um, not even celebrities really. I think Cardi was the first big celebrity she worked with, but there was that like versatility there. And I think for me, um, having that range was a, is what allows artists to, um, as well as you know, work with artists and also it allows their teams to like trust me to come on board and capture those images, right? Like even this picture of G Herbo, like if I was to go on tour um, with an artist and a manager or an assistant or the artist saw this, I think, you know, if I, if I was if I was the person's, on the person's team, I, I would say, okay, wow, like this to me, this, this was taken as like, a, like a, as an event photo. This is the 35 millimeter lens, um, F1.4, um, that's what I, that's like my go-to by the way and also a 50 millimeter 1.2 i really like like shallow shallow depth of field but with this um it's like people being able to look and see okay well she could shoot stuff on sets and then she can also work with like the circumstances of like you know like this these were completely out of my control right and like she can still create the moments so having the versatility and ultimately having a good eye is is really is really important people want to be able to trust you 
Um, like I said, because artists move so fast, like, you know, this burner shot, he didn't even want to take this picture. Like literally I was like, Hey, we have to get this shot because it's the Grammys and, you know, um, but being able to get these two really kind of different vibes of photos, right? Like one's a portrait and well, they're both portraits, but one's more like, one's more portraiture and one's a bit more documentary. Um, and the one on the left actually went on to be licensed and used as part of one of his like, um, well, he put out a song earlier this year and like they, they were able to use this photo for, you know, f for that, like, um, for that cover, like as part of the cover artwork. Whereas one on the right, you know, I could see that being like something I worked on with like the New York Times or like if it was like a billboard day in the life or something like that. So the versatility I think is important and, you know, being able to know your camera, I'm, I'm really big on the technical aspects. I think a lot of people have really great, you can keep scrolling by the way, a lot of people have really great like creative ideas, but like I always stress like understanding, you know, honestly like ISO and shutter speed and aperture and f-stop, like all that stuff, like that's what allows you to be as creative as you want because you know what you need to do, like technically speaking, to get that creative stuff like really tight and sound. Just Sorry. to ask, you know, you mentioned Burnham, but wasn't in a mood. So what are your tactics to get an artist to shoot when they are not in the greatest mood? Is it just because of that build trust in the relationship or how do you encourage that? Because now it, go, it went on to be licensed, but so how did you even get that to work? Or what That's would you suggest? That's a good question. That's a good question. I, think, I think it depends on like, like my personality. Um, I've actually had to learn the hard way sometimes too when to speak and not speak. Like I've definitely had like my slip ups when working with artists of like just being over eager or like doing too much and not even like on some, like in a bad way, but just because I was excited or because like, you know, personally like me being able to communicate has always been um, one of the reasons why I feel like, like, that's, that's just kind of how I like market myself. Like just naturally, I've always been a talker since I was a kid, but there's a time and place for everything. It's not always like, you know, uh, it's not always necessary um, to, to, to speak up. Sometimes you have to observe. And with Berna, like I've, after having worked with him, I remember the first time I got to shoot him, um, the girl I showed you guys earlier on in the slideshow, Brianna, she um, invited me to capture some photos of him after he was, um, he was nominated for like a BT hip hop award. And I had taken some photos and then I went back and I asked him for another photo and he told me to leave him alone, like in Pigeon, it was so funny, like, like, you know, and that threw me off. But then when I worked with him again, like a year later for that Grammy moment he had, I knew like, you know, I can't, like I, I have to just like chill, get the photo, get the shot, you know, sometimes for me, a big thing I use with artists is like taking the picture and showing them the picture. I feel like that also helps to like get them in the, in the zone and get them excited. And like the, that way they know um, what's happening and like uh, can, can kind of contribute or collaborate with you a bit better as far as their energy, if they see the image. Um, yeah, I think it's about reading the room though, for sure. Reading the room, um, you know, once you figure out like what your, what your, skill sets are like for me I make like these really great like bad dad jokes and like I can be really like punny and like like when I when I work with uh Gucci like him and his wife for example like that's something I feel like they they appreciated you know and like while we were young and and just like outgoing and just like beautiful people making good shit I feel like it's about navigating these spaces like with tact and being smart about it and then just understanding like what works for you right like for some people like, like, you know, like the humor could be funny or like some people like, you know, I'm trying to think of other examples. Like, you know, you think about people like Rennell, right? Like Rennell Madrano, who's like, I, I see her as like a really cool girl. I see her as like a really cool photographer. Like she's low key, like, you know, but I feel like that's, that's part of her marketing as well. Like that's part of what makes her, like what sells her and what gives her, you know, her, her moment mm -hmm. um you look at people like dana scruggs for example who's like the opposite not as far as being like cool or not cool but she just seems she's like low-key but she's like she seems really smart to me like it could be the glasses too but like something about her just seems like very like <laughs> like very like she's about her shit so i feel like that can also help you know for me like i'm just really like bubbly and outgoing i think that is part of like an energy that some people like to have around them or like to have on set so you know, like ask your friends or ask people around you, like, you know, what do you, like, what, you know, what do you guys think are like, 
like my my best attributes or my best you know qualities and like figure out how to make them work for you like work wise you know and that's that's something people say like in general like that's that's mm-hmm. what's gonna because that's that's who you are that's always gonna be who you are if you want it to be so figure out ways to make that work for you and I know we're almost out of time but there we do still have a few more questions now into like the business oh. of photography um and especially because as creatives we're just so so focused on creating that we don't necessarily understand so Sylvia um asked do you have any business tips that you know you wish when you first starting out like even licensing like how did you even navigate that world of licensing um just anything in that realm oh my god it's so funny so first of all guys if people ever hit you up and ask about just using your work for credit and and like can i just post this in your credit like definitely always ask if there's a budget like it, it like for your image to be used in any capacity um that, like you really should be compensated because people are using it to market themselves and you should be paid accordingly that happened to me literally yesterday um i took a picture of cardi sasha obama and offset backstage at a, at a festival two years ago and this is so random but like wendy williams is producer and e-news hit me up to use it and like I was like, like, you're Wendy Williams and you're E! News. Like, what do you mean you want to just post it for credit? Like, you know, people, you know, they're doing their job of like saving themselves a coin and, you know, just trying to whatever. But you definitely just know, like, the world literally, literally doesn't go around if we are not doing our job. You know, like photography is since the beginning of time. Well, no, since the beginning of when photography existed, like it has helped us as like, you know, a civilization, honestly, be able to communicate messages to each other. The things that people have seen about like, you know, what happened, you know, in America with like Black Lives Matter uh, over the summer, you know, compared to just the ways that you're seeing, like even right now in the midst of like election stuff happening and I hope everyone is gonna vote, right? I'm sure everyone is is voting, but like even in the midst of seeing what's happening, like even the messages I've been able to see around like voter suppression, like the pictures of these crazy lines, all that stuff, even if it's like an iPhone versus like a professional camera, photography literally is so powerful for that reason. So people always need images, right? Because, you know, seeing really is believing. So just remember that and walk in that like energy, first of all, knowing that you're deserving of whatever bag or opportunity one and then two you know you have to you have to like tap into resources and you have to be knowledgeable I didn't always know and I still don't always know everything about like licensing and and all that stuff and resources I remember I would often like text people or just call them and like you know how much I charge for this how much I do that for and I think for me um my honest advice would just be you know you have to kind of just like go through it like you know you have to have like those experiences of like reading through contracts or maybe having that like slip up or that bad moment to figure out like what not to do next time um unless you literally like want to go to like school for like like i don't know like legal and like uh business like it it really is experience i think that builds that kind of confidence and that security um but the resources are out there and they're available there's so 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 many like places that help artists especially freelance artists and photographers um figure out how to navigate the space so just never be discouraged just really like be encouraged to tap in like I said to what's a, what's available for you and then I know you you know you're young but is there like a lesson that you really just like oh like this I fumbled that bag and this is what, and like you remember that moment that you really fumbled the bag and then what did you do to like not repeat that mistake oh literally like what I was just talking about with like talking <laughs> talking too much like I remember um last year i had like this really big it wasn't a it wasn't a huge um it was a big project because a lot of money but like it wasn't it wasn't that high pressure it was actually really chill but i um i was working for facebook and i like i remember like i just was i just wasn't focused honestly you know i was on like a 10-day job um we had like I think we had like six shoot days, but we were in like, it was like a road trip basically. So it was, uh, we were in the Everglades and we were in like, I want to say like Kansas city, uh, like Philly, like we just went to different places and, um, like New Orleans. Um, and I just wasn't focused. Like, I think I was trying too hard. I was, I was too concerned with like, um, I was excited to be different places. You know, I was like trying to post Instagram stories 
on like on the job you know what i mean like i had to have a conversation with the producer about it you know which is the bad look like i like almost missed the flight when we were going to one city and like i went one of my friends lived in lived in new orleans and i had checked in with him and ended up getting back to like my hotel room like pretty late and even though i would have still probably made the flight or whatever like someone saw me walking in you know at like 4 a.m like that like that stuff is a bad look right and like i wasn't doing anything crazy or bad i literally was just like out in town you know and sometimes there are those jobs where you can do that with the space and time for that but at the end of the day like if we're keeping it a, a super buck, like just like the color of our skin, like our genders, a lot of people are going to look at us and like assume off rip like things, right? And we have to work. I mean, you hear it, like twice as hard to get half as far. And like, that was a lesson for me because I was the only black person like on set and to not represent myself with like the amount of professionalism that I knew I could it really actually broke my heart. I, I, I even felt bad, honestly, when I like received like the payments, I was like, I don't think I delivered my full potential. So um, like I said, from there on out, I've learned like, even though I like to talk, even though I like to be charismatic, um, there's a time and place for everything. And some people, when they hire you, they don't care how nice you are. They don't care how cool you are. They need, they want your, they want your photos. They hire you to do a job. So you gotta do the job and keep it pushing. And that was definitely like that moment where I learned sort of the hard way. Um, to just kind of always read the room, you know, know who I'm working with and making sure that I am on my P's and Q's. Like people will literally hire people who are, who, who have better work ethic before they hire people who are more talented or take better photos. If, you know, if they can know that they can get, get what they're asking for, get what they're paying for. Um, and, and if I was in the same position, I would, I would think the same thing. I'd rather hire someone who I knew was reliable and professional. Um, than someone who I just like believed in and maybe thought was creative um, if I didn't think that they had that professionalism. So that's a, that's a big, that was a big learning lesson for me. And like, you know, I went on to apologize and, and, you know, hopefully they don't hate me, but like, you know, <laughs> you, you live and you learn, I guess. <laughs> and then, you know, I know that this year is wrapping up, but you know, is there anything that we should be on the lookout for anything that you want to do? Like who would you even want to work with after working with all the artists you, you know, you've done like, What's next? I know you people hate that question, but <laughs> uh, no, I don't hate that question. Um, I was just arguing with my sister about this last night. She was like, "You need to do something different. You need to level up." So I'm, I'm, I'm always having like, like I said, my my house is like my mom was like my social media strategist. My sister like is they're all like, and I don't hire them, but they just they'll they'll just give it to me anyway. Um, she's like my analyst or something. Um, I think that as years wrapping up, hmm. Um, I just shot something kind of cool for Billboard um, with Kevin Lyles. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but he's a CEO and co-founder of 300 Entertainment. Also was um, one of the co-founders, I think, of Def Jam with Russell Simmons back in the day. So he's like a heavy hitter. And I got to work with him. Um, and, and yeah, he's just like one of those music legends. So that was cool. And that's going to be coming out. I think they do like uh, those yearly... Um, Hip hop executive list, like those those kind of those curated lists. So he's being honored, and it was really cool to meet him and work with him. Um, and then I think just going forward, I want to continue to do more stuff that's kind of more in the film space. Like I love uh, doing stills, um, being able to do so with Cardi, like on music videos, has been really awesome. But I would love to work on like longer form content. Um, you know, if it's like someone shooting a movie. Um, in like in like Mississippi or like in Greenland for like a month I would love to be able to like be the person like to do the stills on the on like a set like you know um for, for stuff like that um or even like if it's like a vice uh who, you know they do a lot of like kind of more documentary style like videos being able to travel and and capture um work like that um that, that's kind of what I really want to continue to work on um but I'm definitely never blocking anything that comes my way. I love music. I love entertainment. I love the advertising spaces. And I think being able to navigate all of them is part of like what I want to continue to do because I, I don't want to be pigeonholed as a celebrity photographer. That was never like my goal. That was never what like I thought my purpose was. And it's been a great tool and like a great avenue to get when people don't know my work. But I want to continue to just create great authentic moments. Um, just like getting in there and showing life as it is, like I said before. So yeah, hopefully uh, 
uh, once the world starts opening, opening back up, I can continue doing that. But um, yeah, I'm hope I'm also I'm, I'm hopeful for 2021. I'm hopeful hopeful for <laughs> the end of of 2020. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, do also, have- anyone else? Sorry, if anyone else have questions, I know it's two, but like I don't want to just run out of here. I feel like there's a lot of stuff I see here in case anyone wants to. Yeah, I mean, Shady says you may not remember, but you gave uh, them some advice on their first gig in ATL. Um, Wait, who? What are you reading? Shady Francis. Oh, I don't see. It. Okay, can you can you read, say it again? Sorry. Oh, you uh, they oh. put in the chat that they, you gave them some advice on their first uh, gig. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I hope it went well. I hope it was good advice. <laughs> I hope it worked. Oh my god, these comments are so nice. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I love in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, and it's like so many people from different places too. Cool. What and you people can reach out to you after this because I know like Felicia had a question about like finding a tech crew, but it's cool uh, to reach out to you afterwards. Yeah, you can. You can email me um, info at flowingala.com. Honestly, the DM like dms just become overwhelming and i see them but sometimes i feel like i i process emails as as more you know things i need to give attention to than like instagram so yeah seriously if you guys have any questions um i like if there's anyone who i want to see like when it's black female photographers for sure so um i definitely will make it my highest priority oh thank you for dropping it in yeah info at flowandgala.com and then yeah you know i mean we're all we're all just like young and trying to get it you know i i think that like the more you can build your portfolio the more you can network and have free opportunities um those just kind of kind of it just begins a it's a snowball effect from there so um yeah i'm more than willing to look at anyone's anything um my picture was used in women's health two years ago and didn't get credit for it how do you go about getting credit um i would advise looking into who the writer was for that or, um, well, at this point, I don't know if you want to get credit. I mean, I don't think I can give you credit from two years ago, but you could definitely argue to be compensated for sure. Um, so I would say looking into who the writer is for that, or if it was featured in like the health section versus the beauty section versus like whatever section, maybe finding who the editor was for that section, um, like the fashion editor, the beauty editor or whatever. And I would reach out to them because like legally, they, like it's illegal to do that so you can definitely at least argue for compensation at least like 250 or something depending on what the image is um so yeah i just saw that question so i wanted to respond to it but yeah please reach out um i hope i was able to help <laughs> thank you paul you're so intelligent and it was so well <laughs> thank you so much it's been yeah. a pleasure it's been a great hour and I'm, we're sending all the prayers we need your 2020 drive for real we do <laughs> Well, thank you for even still going through crisis mode and still taking the time to hop on so i really do appreciate it 100 percent. thank you guys so much for having me and i i look forward to coming back and being a guest in the audience with someone else one of y'all being the speakers <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone i hope everyone has a great day bye guys bye